Our goal is to win. You know, watching Rich and Mayhem Freedom go to the MAC last year and watching Rich hold up that sword, that's the goal, man. I want to grab that sword and I want to hold it up. Good job, guys. 148. 148 left. The goal is not just to, to make it to qualify, but the goal is to podium at our semifinal. We're hungry. We're real hungry. CrossFit Mayhem has long been synonymous with greatness at the CrossFit Games. As the legend of Mayhem has grown, so too has its magnetic pull on aspiring talent from all corners of the globe. They've made the pilgrimage to Cookville, Tennessee to train, to learn, and to build legacies of their own. The result? An army of Mayhem athletes. At the 2022 semifinals, in addition to 85 individuals, there will be 32 teams not named Freedom flying Mayhem's banner when they take the competition floor. Two of them, Mayhem Independence and Mayhem Justice, are homegrown. I was born and raised here in Cookville, Tennessee. Started Mayhem as a member in January of 2016, and I've been working here since late 2017. When I was a freshman in high school, I started here because my mom started going here. I was just a member until I turned 17 and then I started coaching. The third and most well-known Mayhem team is, of course, Froning's own CrossFit Mayhem Freedom. With the return of powerhouse females Nistler and Williamson and a roster update welcoming Canada's Sam Cornier, they're looking to solidify their legacy as the most dominant team in CrossFit Games history by tracking down gold medal number six. Almost as impressive as Freedom's dominance is the depth of their bench. Fielding one competitive team at the CrossFit Games is impressive. Fielding three teams with knockout potential is unheard of. Nice, he's that kid. While Freedom is comprised of household names, independence and justice will be harder for fans to pick out of the crowd, at least for now. No one on independence has really made for the, a name for themselves completely. We're the young team, we're the new team, we're the team that has zero percent experience. So I think in a lot of aspects, like people look at us as like, you know, oh yeah, they're fit, but whatever. The name Independence is a carryover from years past. 100 points for CrossFit Mayhem Independence. The roster, however, which boasts the fittest firefighter on earth, a powerhouse female with experience in both individual and team competition, the fittest woman in South America, and a reality show star, is brand new. We're completely new and we're we're a new independence, and so I feel like we're trying to prove ourselves. With a full-time Mayhem coach, a member of Rich's videography team, a newcomer living the van life to pursue his dreams of CrossFit competition, and only one team member who can claim experience at the semifinal level, justice, it could be argued, comes from the most humble roots of the three. I know people look at us as underdogs, and I mean, that's just, that's just how. We're the third seed coming out of Mayhem. I mean, people are gonna look at us like that, but... I'm excited to show them what we have. If history and the online quarterfinal results are any indication, Freedom's semifinal appearance at the Syndicate Crown should serve as their warm-up for the CrossFit Games, not a barrier to entry. But both independence and justice will have something to prove. Knowing that we're chasing Rich's coattail and Mayhem Freedom's coattail is, you know what I mean? Like, we don't want to lose in any workouts in the barn. With this new cadre of athletes, a new version of Rich Froning has been born. Great. The coach, manager, and largely role model and mentor. 136, let's go, let's go, last round, last round. Give it what you got, seven, you're done. Training in close proximity has created a unique coopetition environment. Part sibling rivalry and part king of the hill, a hierarchy has evolved with freedom on top. You know, I like to like, you know, <laughs> try to talk some, talk some shit to Rich, but it just, it doesn't work. Like, we're fighting for second place, I mean, <laughs> at this point but independence and justice are hungry to make waves. While they're unlikely contenders to take down the flagship team, they are legitimate threats to the rest of the competition. I'd be thankful and it'd be an absolute honor to be able to step on a podium. Being here and training like a champion with the champ and knowing what I wanna do, like that's all I wanna do. And with top 10 overall finishes worldwide by each team in quarterfinals, an all-mayhem podium at the Games is not out of the question. First, they'll need to qualify. I've seen
seen them and heard them, but I haven't seen them all together to really like about what's think about how to do it. Five, four, three, two, one, eight, 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 yeah, we're laughing. Go, right? We're like, dude, it's, it's like it's like we knew this was coming. Do you touch and go or just I think dead plates. Dead stop singles. Dead stop Fast. singles quick. Oh hey, like I can take my sweet time on the handstand walk because the lunges are gonna be much slower or whatever it may be. It doesn't look hard. It just seems like it could get confusing. But even, it's not really even that confusing. So no, I don't think it's going to be that hard. I don't know. I just feel like they could have been harder. Maybe that's just mayhem athlete in me. Who knows? I'm going to have to redo this. Because it says this yeah. angle. So let's just do the same yeah. thing on that camera. Uh, Squats are simple. Stand up all the way. Same thing for the pistols. Like in the quarterfinals, y'all saw them here. I mean, it was slight, but they'd be like here, and they get a uh, penalty. We're so up there. come here. Are you going to wear lifters? Yeah. I don't. Are you going to wear lifters? This one, they still run down, the female will go down, back down, and then you're here, you're gonna go down, back. I feel like I don't wanna let down other people, so I think that's a little more pressure with a team, especially like during the week when you're training, and uh, you wanna make sure that you're putting all the work in because you know they are too. Are you nervous? Uh, yes. Not like extremely nervous, but I'm not as nervous for today, maybe for tomorrow, but I feel good today. I've been a member here for it's going on seven years, so I've just constantly seen these guys do all the right stuff, and so, yeah, I think it's kind of rubbed off me a little bit, just kind of knowing what to do and what not to do, but I'm constantly, just, I'm constantly also figuring it out as I go. I just, really, I just really don't want to mess up, because I feel like if I mess up, it'll come down to me, you know? Just because, like, they're looking at me, I think, because I have a little more experience than any of them when it comes to team stuff. And I don't have much at all, I just have more than they do. I mean, obviously we want to do the best we can, but like, get through it healthy, feel good by the end of it. Be happy with what we, you know, put out and get ready for semis. Do you think you guys will beat Freedom on any workout this week? This weekend? I mean, they're really good. Everyone knows that they're really good. I don't really have, like, I don't have any expectations of beating them at anything, honestly. I mean, do I think we can? Maybe, but... Um, but they're really good. They're, I mean, they're probably going to win the games, and I don't think anyone's going to say anything about it. I mean, I don't think we're far off from them. I think that if they were to do a workout first, we could probably pace very similar to what they do. So I don't think we're stressed about it. I think we're just trying to just get through this and get back to training, honestly. Good, good. Luke Parker. I am in the pants. Uh, watching Freedom, like the best in the world do it, and like how they strategize going into it, it's like, it almost feels like you're cheating in a way, kind of like being able to pick at what they do and be able to try to replicate it afterwards. You see what time they get, and like, you know, you try to shoot for it, see, see what you can do, give your best shot. Cinco. 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 We know about kilograms, not pounds. <laughs> <laughs> this workout is too light for you. Yeah. Very light. <laughs> she will do it really fast. Touch and go. Touch and go. Touchy. Touch and go fast. Do you think it will be challenging going with Sasha because she's so fast? Lost it. I'm gonna get a little less rest, I think, than I'd like. But yeah. Oh uh, no, it'll be really fun. It'll be fast. Um, it's not terribly heavy, so I'm gonna do my best. I just literally ripped and scooped through workout. So yeah, you can say I'm looking my job. Two, one, go!
good. I was really, I was really nervous for that one. Really nervous for some reason. Yeah. You know, every time it's three, two, one, go. Those weights feel so much lighter. Yeah, that was hell of fun. That's like the dream workout for me. Were you nervous about the last barbell? No. 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 I knew it was probably gonna look hard, but it don't matter how it looks. Just get it up. Yeah. That was yeah. Good job. Well, this was the easy I day. I was single. Yeah. Well, it's gonna <laughs> hurt. <laughs> I'm gonna go straight into the run, whereas Seth said he thinks he's a better burpeer. He's gonna get the rest coming off. I think to go slow in the beginning is gonna help everyone out. We're gonna go off of your burpee face. Okay, yeah, cool. None of their heads are behind the line. But then you look at the standard, and the standard says you have to be behind the line. Head has to be behind the line. So I would put some chalk down. And just do where it you're yeah. chalk. I feel like I'm making one of those handprints you do when you're like a kid. I'm good, I'm good. You're good, you're good, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I'm good, I'm All good. Right. All right. So watch that foot. No, but still. Good. You're good, yeah. When you guys 3, 2, 1, go, ran over here, you were in your own planet. Like, you've got to, you're not the only person. Yeah, yeah. Because the goal, I told Alexis, that you, Burpee, because she knows how to pace. You are the pace in the first and second round. And then when Luke gets tired, then he's the pace. He was fine. Which, you should have stuck with one person being the patient. Well, we were just afraid that he would do what he did. Hey, you did go. Hey, sick! I mean, if I'm going too fast, it's like... Yeah, you're fine. Yell, like, yell at me. That's why I yelled at you. It wasn't... Yeah. I just... The reason I yelled is because it was the only way I could say something real quick. I was just trying to help him there. I just don't want him to, like, major penalty or anything like that. I just saw some burpees. The burpees were getting questionable. <coughs> I don't know if there's actually no reps, but... I just wanted to not have that problem, so I was yelling at Luke because Luke's supposed to be the pace, yeah. and Luke gets so. In the beginning of the workout, you yelled at him for what reason? Because he was going too fast, and he's supposed to be the pacer for yeah. that, and he was going out way too hot, and nobody was really keeping up with him. So that's, and you're getting no reps at that point. So I yelled at him for that. Ben, I'm I'm very surprised at where we're standing right now. Why? Um, what? I mean, I don't know. I just I thought that. I mean, we're only two workouts in, there's three more to go, but I didn't really think the run burpee workout was like, I didn't think we had a great time. I thought we, our time was decent, you know, but I mean, I guess it was pretty good because we're sitting 12th right now. I mean, unofficially. I guess they have to like probably finalize some stuff, but I guess we'll see. And then we finish. I'm going to jump over. I'm going to move my this dumbbell a little bit, and then we'll get started. I'm nervous. I'm always nervous though. What's your goal for it? Uh, to not let Aniston down. <laughs> she doesn't want to let you down, that's her goal. She's not going to. It's really just these, on the second yeah. especially. For, uh, whoever's on the, be, like, be, whoever goes first on the rope, remember the person's coming off the rope doing 20, so it's going to take them a quick sec. Like I had, I went from here straight into 20, so I needed like a second at least to get my grip. You're not gonna fail them, so get to 12, and you know, you've got four on each arm. Think about that. Like it's not eight; it's four on each arm, because that's the grip. And then it's you're here, and you're home. Rest at 10 and rest at 20. Give yourself plan two breaks. Yeah. Try and limit the like hanging around and then just keep rest, going. Yeah, and you'll be fine. First part, 
just gonna try to do no more than probably three sets. And then box jump, dumbbell, everything else I'm broken. And then back to the rig, probably gonna do like, well, we're gonna sell out. 18, 19. I think that's the hardest one so far we've done. We got one left. So TBD, that one's gonna be worse, but this is all box jumps. Total bar. So de he's de so demoralizing at two no reps. Better than last time, honestly. Surprisingly. Weird. Reset once you roll it to your spot. And then absolutely. Because you gotta remember, you're giving me time to eat too. So no rush at all. What are your thoughts on the renew? Why not? Why not? It's more for Angelo's, his mental fortitude. <laughs> so easy too. I was stressed for nothing. How are you feeling about this one? Pretty good. I'm uh, kind of excited about it. I tend to do better on these kind of workouts, so I don't want to speak too soon, but I did well. 22.3 uh, and also uh, end of quarterfinals indie. Uh, yeah, I should do pretty good, I think. Everybody on our team's pretty good at these movements and Seth's like elite at thrusters, as you know. I'm mean, being honest, I feel more nervous for this one than any of them. Not nervous for like, like performing good or bad, just nervous because like I know how bad it's gonna hurt, how bad we're gonna have to make it hurt. On the 27 and 21, be smooth, and then 15 and nine, burn it down. Shoulders ring straight down, come on. Strong lockout. Come on, Angelo. Yep. Come on, here we go. Here we go. Take a second. Nice job, Alexis. Come on. There you go. Big kick. That's good. Take a breath. You're doing good. One at a time. Finish it. Come on, Jess. Throw your head. Come on. During quarterfinals, we were really, really blown away. You know, I knew we would qualify for semifinals, but we had no, you know, expectation on where we would land. And after the first day, we were sitting in 12th, I believe. And you know, I, I, at three o'clock, I was refresh, refreshing the leaderboard, just kept refreshing. And then I saw we were in 12th, and I was like, no way, that's crazy. And then the goal was like, well, hey, I think, you know, top 20 would be sick, It'd be like really cool. And then next day rolls around, scores are in, and we're sitting in seventh, I think. And we were like, oh my gosh, like we can actually, might be able to round out top 10. Fifth workout, you know, got submitted, and we rounded out, you know, top eight. And now, Instead of us me thinking like, oh hey, like I think we could qualify for semifinals and maybe be close to qualifying for the games, and now I'm kind of like going to like I think we could potentially podium as syndicate. When training in Mayhem, you're feeling like you're just getting buried every single day by everyone. So then when it comes to competition, it's it's kind of cool to see how you stack up most of the time pretty well against others. I just wanted us to be in the top half. I wanted to be in at least in the second heat in semifinals because I wanted to know, you know, like kind of have an idea of what times we were we would have to beat in each event. But yeah, after quarterfinals it was just like we deserve to be here. <laughs> Even after Ben and I had a conversation that we had no idea that we were that fit. Seventh in North America and ninth worldwide. We were shocked. So I think that we all kind of have to work on our confidence a little bit, but quarterfinals was a big confidence boost. To be honest, I didn't know where Luke and Angelo stood in, their, in terms of their fitness. I was super stoked because we did the burpee workout and Luke was saying he was going to have to pace us because he was going to die. He went out hot and he stayed hot the whole time. So um, I was really excited when I saw that. Um, after, after just how we performed on day one, I had no doubt in my mind that we could finish in the, in the top five at least. Being third 
the worldwide leaderboard for quarterfinals with Mam Independence. For me, it wasn't a shock, like my mental goal. And I talked to my team about this. I, I told them, I was like, I think a really good goal for us should be top five. Knowing like this time of year, we're not peaked in fitness, knowing we don't have a whole lot of experience working as a team. I was extremely happy because I felt like we made quite a few mistakes. But the cool thing about being here and doing what Rich does is, you know, we're not training for quarterfinals or the open. We're always training for the games. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Last round. Come on, come on. 115 left. The plan today is to practice. We're going to do events two and four, as we have planned anyways. Um, mostly because we've never done all four of us synchro wall balls. And We've only done like two warm deadlift workouts and it popped up, so I feel like we need to practice that. Well, I don't know if I want to say I suck at the warm up, <laughs> but I have been known to struggle with the warm up. Kind of just like, basically like the simple stuff that a lot of people don't realize, and we probably don't realize too. He'll probably just point it, he'll, he'll point it out to us and kind of just tell us what we're doing he's, wrong. He's gonna degrade us for two hours. Yeah. Which is important. So as soon as, as soon as I hit the as soon as I touch the worm, he's gonna be like, what the f are you doing? <laughs> immediately no. Immediately no. I've seen what I need to see and immediately no. Well I think the worm is gonna be a huge separator um, at semifinals so we're really hammering the worm. Any and all movements on the worm actually. Hey dad uh, I mean uh hey, Rich I think it's really about just figuring out your transitions, figuring out if you're going to need to break, and okay. just getting, getting. I like three rounds better. Yes, yeah. nine minutes. Yeah, I would not. Yeah. You guys ready? Hey, we play some music so we're not listening to some too. Nope. You guys need to work on calling and communication. Communication. If you communicate well on this first one, then I'll let you. Ben, higher. Which leg? There you go. Good. Good job guys, 148, 148 left. Ben, slide back a little bit. They're not gonna let you let that thing go around your back. 115. Rich has really helped us out a lot, especially with the worm. Just like information that any old average Joe wouldn't like think about or know. Say switch and you have to pop it up and turn. I think he wants the other Mayhem teams to do as best as they can too and him wanting us to come up to the barn and do a few things with him and his team, I mean it's a game changer. When I came here I was, you know, I was obviously a nobody but throughout the year like showing what I can do, progressing, for Rich to even notice it and like start giving me and our team tips, I mean it's huge. Seth, be careful. You're a little bit slower, but you're throwing the ball higher. No one knew what I was capable of in Cali. And I come here, I'm just kind of starting to spark a light and show what I can do. Go. Obviously, we've just added in the worm. I mean, we were doing some worm before then, but we've added in more because we're gonna see it, it's obvious. Synchro stuff, which we had some in the quarters, but we've added more of that. Obviously, um, our goal is to qualify for the games, then from there it'll change a little bit. You know, pegboard usually shows up, some handstand walk obstacles, stuff that's gonna be more difficult, more skill-oriented, um, and then even more worm stuff. So it, uh, you have to evolve with the programming. It took a while to kind of get used to what our team dynamic was. was. Luke is pretty fresh in the sport, but he also has a lot of ideas. <laughs> so you kind of have to keep him under control and keep reminding him what's actually realistic and what's not. I was, I mean, we're going off of Luke, not, I was going off of Sasha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Only because I, I was thinking, yeah, I was, I didn't listen. Hey, this is good. This is why we're doing it. What? Are you guys ready? Set of three. Yeah, I'm going off Luke. Set of three. We, ha we have a good time together. We all, I feel like we all have pretty good humor and like to mix it in here and there. What's your best Luke impression? <laughs> well, besides climbing out of the roof of a car and going <laughs> 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 <laughs>
No, you're not getting that gold content right now. Another day, Scott. We all hate to lose. And we work out like we hate to lose. We communicate like we hate to lose. We're fighting for that podium spot, but I don't think anyone thought, like, our name wasn't thrown around as this contender for beating freedom or having a podium spot or anything. All right, semifinals, we made a plan to do 10. We'll do 12 because we're hitting 10 on the judges count, you know what I mean? Well, let's do the workout. That's what I'm saying. Let's do it. Do you? Let's see what happens. Our fitness is there so as long as we know how we each do like rep speed and what we look like when we're dying that's kind of important yeah. yeah it's one thing to practice your own fitness it's one thing to practice teamwork when you're not under fatigue but when you're really fatigued that's when things start to fall apart yeah. and when they fall apart it's hard to get them back together <laughs> but I really like how Alexis on that last round she was like ready to get on the bar right away on the last set of bar because if it's ever our last set, you know everyone has a little bit of the tank to sprint at the end. So, just be mindful of that. But I thought the deadlifts were great. If that comes up in a workout, I think we're fast. I don't think there's a reason, would you agree? I don't think there's a reason not to break early and often yeah. and keep that fast cadence because we're dropping it, we're moving. Your guys' cadence on toes bar is way faster than mine. Really? So that's what, yeah, so that's why I was, so, I was getting gas because I was speeding by my toes bar so much. Everybody on the team, we're all such good friends. That really helps translate to like when we're, our heart rates are high and we're all like, you know, kind of suffering together. It's like we, we kind of understand each other at a personal level and that really helps. You kind of know each other and you know each other's thresholds and you know when someone's, you know, not having a good day or having a good session or whatever. No amount of coaching is going to help a team that doesn't mesh or a team that like doesn't work well together. But since we do, like when Rich coaches us, we take that and we act on it and it goes really well. Like the things actually work. But if it was a team that, you know, didn't really work that well together, it was just like a bunch of individual athletes put together on a team, his expertise wouldn't help at all. There's, you just have to like have that. You have to be able to communicate and be able to mesh and then anything that Rich or any other coach is going to tell you, it's going to work. At the end of the day, we're all just like here for each other. Like we all, we're all best friends and like we were before and we'll be after. Grab a little bit wider and like try scooping this front arm over more. It's so awkward. I could not figure out my placing. We gotta do that one again. I mean, as far as training goes, yeah, we're staying extremely hungry. It's the first time I've ever competed on a team where everyone's taking it very seriously. And then if she, I'll finish it out, whatever it is. I like it. And then I'll go right to the road. That kid, there you go. It's awesome too because this is the gold standard is who we train with. Being here and training like a champion with the champ, I'm going full send in everything I can. I'm trying to get as fit as I can, as fast as I can. Getting excited because we're getting a little bit more experience as we go as a team and we're starting to get scary as individuals yeah. training wise which makes me happy because we're hungry we're real hungry
But to attain greatness, hunger will not be enough, and the semifinals will raise all of the stakes. Can they perform when it matters most? Under the pressure of the bright lights, broadcast cameras, and thousands of voracious fans, with nowhere to hide. I am so excited to compete as a team again. When it's a team and everyone performs at their top or we can perform together as a whole really well, it's so exciting and you get to like celebrate with everyone and that's, you can't beat that. Semifinals is a big thing. I know it's also like it's only semifinals, but it's almost kind of like, it's like a kid's dream if you think about it. I think we need to try to remind ourselves to slow down, relax, you know, it's just another workout and hopefully that's how we attack it. I think we're gonna be shocked, you know, like, I, don't, I know that none of us really have experienced that. Jess might have a little bit at Granite Games, but really, like, this is all our rookie season, so to go to a live, in-person competition, not just alone, but with a team, honestly, I don't know what to expect. I think that we're perfectly capable of beating anybody in our field, as long as we do the work. I don't think going team is, like, the easy way out, or it, easy way to make it to the games. I feel fitter now this year than ever before. It'll be a game changer being in the final heat and right next to Mayhem Freedom. For me personally, growing up, I mean, I saw Rich competing individually and that was, that was, it was so cool. Like I looked up to him and to be able to take the floor with Rich Froning and his team, That's cool. <laughs> Until now, standing shoulder to shoulder with Rich meant training, working towards a common goal. At semifinals, it means war. And the expectation for any Cookville team is that you play to win. I would say the goal is to definitely make it to the CrossFit Games. The goal is not just to, to make it to qualify, but the goal is a podium at our semifinal. I would like to think that we could place pretty well at the CrossFit Games as well. You can be friends outside the field. But when you're on the floor, you're trying to beat everybody that's there. It doesn't matter. We want to take first place. Can we? I don't know. But, you know, like that's, that's what we want. We're going to do everything we can do to do that. Our goal is to win. You know, watching Rich and Mayhem Freedom go to the MAC last year and watching Rich hold up that sword, that's the goal, man. I want to grab that sword and I want to hold it up. But only the worthy can wield the sword. And worth in our world will be decided by six unique challenges. More important than the trophy itself is the door prize that accompanies it. The right to compete at the CrossFit Games.